probably aren't training what I would call your primary needs. So you're going to have all kinds of wins of all different calibers. It might be surviving the bottom of the mount for four minutes against an upper belt. That was amazing. Or it might be that you swept this really tough guy in the gym. Man, why does your jiu-jitsu suck so bad? Here's some advice coming from a jiu-jitsu black belt. How's it going everybody? My name is Chasen Hill. If you're new to this channel, welcome in. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. We've had a lot of new visitors checking out this channel recently, so I greatly appreciate it. If you're a returning visitor and you haven't subscribed yet, please do that down below right now also. So I'm a jiu-jitsu instructor. I've been training and teaching jiu-jitsu now for 13 plus years. So if you guys like all things jiu-jitsu, this is probably a pretty good channel for you guys to check out. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about why your jiu-jitsu sucks so bad. And what's interesting about this video is it's going to be advice for all belt ranks. It's not necessarily just for white belts, blue belts, purple belts, or whatever. This is usually across the board. When most students feel like their jiu-jitsu is sucking, it usually has to do with these things. So the first thing I want to talk about is why do you think your jiu-jitsu sucks? I'm always fascinated to hear what students' reasoning is for their jiu-jitsu sucking. Why do they feel that way? What makes them say that? Did they receive some negative of comment from their instructor, from another training partner, is it an internal feeling, right? Why does your jujitsu suck? And so that brings me to the next point. If you can identify why that sucks, well, how can you fix that problem? That's a pretty easy idea or thought process to go through. However, it's much harder to execute on. But I'm always curious on why jujitsu students think their jujitsu sucks. Who has told you that? Is it that you're just not doing success in the training room? Is it that you can't remember techniques? Is it what what is it? Because that's going to give you a big clue on how to fixing your sucky jujitsu. So figure out why do you think that way and then start fixing that problem from that point. What else can happen is that usually students aren't using the training time effectively or or efficiently. A lot of times students have zero idea of what they should be training or why they're training it. They just show up to the gym with literally zero plan. They're not prepared. And so they're just kind of him hawing around, rolling around, not really having any goals why they're training. And so they're not actually accomplishing anything. And so if you're not effectively using your training time and you're not using your training partners wisely, then that's a very tough thing to get over. And that's going to definitely affect your jujitsu and and that's probably another reason why your jiu-jitsu sucks so bad is because you're not using training time effectively. When I say effectively, I don't mean frequently. I don't mean more. You can definitely get quality training out of not having to train seven days a week. This channel or who I coach more of is for the everyday jiu-jitsu student. If you're a competition person, yes, a very good answer is to train more, train more frequently so your jiu-jitsu doesn't suck. But for most people, that's not realistic and that's not doable. So I think that is the absolute most terrible advice that anyone could ever receive. So instead, start figuring out ways to make your jiu-jitsu training more effective and more efficient. I did a video right here talking about how to use your training partners wisely and effectively. So if you haven't checked that video out, it's a huge insight on how to boost your training. Another common thing of why your jiu-jitsu probably sucks is because you probably aren't training what I would call your primary needs. So in jiu-jitsu, if you think about a training session, you're always having wins and losses. So you're going to have all kinds of wins of all different calibers. It might be surviving the bottom of the mount for four minutes against an upper belt. That was amazing. Or it might be that you swept this really tough guy in the gym. Those are wins. And then you're going to have losses. You just keep hit, getting hit with this same takedown. This same training partner is always tapping you in this arm lock. And being able to identify which are wins and which are losses. In the losses category, we have things that are called primary needs needs and secondary needs. Your primary needs are the things that if you trained right this very second are going to make game changing and impactful boosting skill raising jujitsu abilities that if you fix it's just going to totally change your game. And then secondary needs are going to be things that need to be worked on but they're not going to be game changing in the moment. They're going to take time. It's a very more complicated skill. Maybe you need to learn some other things before you can start fixing that secondary need. Identifying 
time, your primary and secondary needs are usually going to be based upon your skill level and your abilities. For example, if I'm a white belt and I realize that I'm having a hard time escaping the bottom of the mount, the bottom of side control, or I'm getting tapped in this specific move over and over again, your jujitsu data is pointing that direction, then those are going to be very identifiable primary needs. It's going to be like blinking lights at you that that's something you need to be training. If you see some bearing bolo online, but you're never in a position to do bearing bolo, then that's a secondary need. Don't even worry about that right now. That will be appropriate later on in your training. And I know a lot of you guys are like, well, but if I chase those kinds of things, that makes me more motivated to show up and train. Yeah, it might. And then that's good for you. But I'll see if you guys are around in another four or five years, because you're going to feel like your jujitsu is still sucking and you're probably going to get unmotivated and I won't see you again. So I hope that you guys are liking this kind of information right now. If you are, leave me a comment down below of why you think your jujitsu sucks. Think about it. What are some things that you think is causing your jujitsu to suck? Is it strength? Is it flexibility? Is it all of those things? It's usually probably not. It usually has to do with your training. I'm going to give you a hint, but let me know down below of why you think your jiu-jitsu sucks. Also, if you guys haven't already, make sure you check out my free training down below. It's a free training video talking about how to identify some of your primary and secondary needs and some common training paths that I recommend you take as a developing jiu-jitsu student. Another reason why you're probably your jiu-jitsu sucks is because of your level of expectations you have set for yourself. This is probably one of the most common things I have to talk jiu-jitsu students off the ledge on. For some reason, when they come in, they have this level of expectation that they're going to be able to dominate and impose their will on a lot of people because they've been training for maybe six months to eight months and so they've set this expectation bar that is way too high and now they can't reach it so they feel like their jiu-jitsu sucks because of their own pressure that they put on themselves i don't know why you guys put so much pressure on yourself to get better so much faster jiu-jitsu is a marathon not a sprint I don't know if it's because of the sport of community or you see guys like Gordon Ryan get their black belt in five years. And so now you think that you suck because you can't do that. But you guys need to understand that everyone has a jiu-jitsu journey and you need to look at yourself realistically. I don't know, maybe it's the Instagram world, it's the YouTube world and everyone lives kind of a fake and unrealistic life. So unless you're willing to dedicate your life to that kind of style, stop setting your expectations so high. Be more realistic because the more realistic you are, the more real you are with your yourself, the longer you're going to train in jiu-jitsu. My goal is to help jiu-jitsu students stay on the mats for as long as possible because jiu-jitsu doesn't grow as an art as a whole if we have less people training. I want there to be so many black belts that it is ridiculously crazy out there. And the only way that we can do that as other jiu-jitsu practitioners is to keep white belts or any jiu-jitsu student on the mat longer. You need to stop making your jiu-jitsu suck and stop making your expectations so freaking high. And one of the last things of why your jiu-jitsu probably sucks is because you're either choosing to ignore or you just don't know how to use your jiu-jitsu resources effectively. Now, what are your jiu-jitsu resources? Well, there's a lot of different ones. I like to break them down by academic or basically physical resources. Some academic resources are things like this, like YouTube channel, instructionals, um, journaling, writing things down, making a jiu-jitsu library, all those things that you can do outside of the academy, you're probably not doing effectively enough. And that could be a reason why your jiu-jitsu sucks. You're not using those academy resources or academic resources effectively. In the physical resources, we have things like solo drills. We have learning how to use your training partners. Then you have also things like weightlifting and strength training. So there are other physical resources that you have. You're probably either don't know how to use these resources effectively or you're just choosing to ignore them altogether. Either reason is not acceptable. So if your jiu-jitsu is sucking, start thinking about, well, how can I use these resources better? So if you're wanting to use more academic resources, this is great for the person who can only train a couple of days a week because of the class times and structure. But if you have time throughout your day, either on a lunch break or you're just time at home with your family and you have some downtime, you can definitely do things like watching instructionals, writing down a game plan, writing down what you want to accomplish, those things don't take an extensive amount of time out of your jiu-jitsu life. But if you can't physically be on the mat training more, then you need to start doing things like that. If it's with the physical tools, then you probably aren't familiar with how to use your training partners, right? Or you're not familiar with how to do maybe all the solo movements. A lot of those things like solo movements, you can even do 
outside of the academy. You can do them on your floor. You can do them on your carpet. You can buy some mats and put them in your house and use your physical training tools. So there's a bunch of ways to increase your jujitsu productivity without actually needing to physically spar or roll or doing things. And that's definitely going to help your jujitsu not suck as much and feel like you guys are still improving steadily. So I hope you guys found this information helpful. Like I said down below, if you guys are into free trainings, make sure you check that out down there. Also, I have an online coaching program that I help the average everyday jiu-jitsu student like yourself become clear, understand what they need to train, offer jiu-jitsu training advice, all things in order to help you accelerate your jiu-jitsu faster. I hope that I hope that you can be a part of it one day. So if you guys are interested in that information, you can visit that link down below or you guys can email me personally for more information. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.